Hello everyone, today I have here in this big box a very big boy, actually I have here two, a 384 and a 640 core thermal slash low light hybrid thermal binocular from Purple River. And we are going to do a full test and review about it and also comparing the recording between the 384 and the 640 units. So let's see what's in the box first. Comes in a very huge but absolutely safe and waterproof box. This case have the safety opening latches here very cool opening the case we will find here all the accessories and unit itself now we have here a cable this cable is an aviation jack cable that leads to multiple uh, other type of endings this is the aviation jack here so let's see what's in the end of the cable we have here a CVBS output then we have a USB A an RS232 plug and the DC 12 volt. I don't know what is this for exactly. So this is a huge cable. Let's put this aside for a second. Then we got here a good charger. This is a Lito Kala. I see this brand on AliExpress many times. This brand is not bad. But some people saying for professional use, this is not, uh, not the best, but it's very good brand for charging batteries. It's very precise and does what it has to do. This brand also available in different other models, but this included um, with the device. Power adapter, simple. We have here micro USB to USB A. This is for the charging. And then we have here a small Picatinny rail and that goes on the top of here so you can have an option to mount in there I don't know laser or laser range finder because it doesn't have laser range finder built in and finally the unit itself which is big behind this protector here is the visible light, full HD, low light, uh, it's also called starlight uh, camera. That can be used to see very well in very, very low light environments. It's almost a night vision. And the unit itself have a 50 millimeter germanium lens for the thermal sensor. In this, this is the 640 core. Under this non-removable cup, we'll find inside the Wi-Fi and the GPS module. Here are the two oculars. You got two screens for each eye. So some of the menu items uh, will appear like uh, stereoscopic. We got here a button to turn on or off. And here is the aviation jack. This cable goes in here. I'm going to show you in a moment. And finally, this is the battery compartment. Uh, this compartment takes four 18650 type batteries. So it's huge. Including with the batteries, I measured about 1.4 kilograms. So it's a heavy. That's why you have here two hand straps. So you can support it uh, while you're using it. Now let's put the box aside. I'm not going to do a separate unboxing on the 384 unit because the accessories are exactly the same. Um, the main difference is the thermal sensor, that's all. The functions and everything is the same, including the 384 unit have the same 50mm lens and the same uh, starlight camera. And also it takes the same exactly amount of batteries, 4 times 18650s. Same weight, about the same weight. The only aesthetical difference between the 640 and the 384 units are the 640 units have this rubber outside with a leather texture, feels like leather, and the 384 unit have metal completely outside. It doesn't have this anti-slippery uh, coating. And as you can see, the buttons are positioned um, slightly in a different location, but the function is exactly the same. The button layout is very cool. As you're holding it like this, you are using three fingers. It's very easy to learn, very easy to master it. The menu buttons are very simple. This button here is a digital zoom. This button here is the menu and the mode switching. With long press, you enter the menu. With short presses, you are switching between the modes like thermal only, low light camera only, hybrid or picture in picture mode. So you can have thermal in the middle and around it has the normal low light camera. In the hybrid mode, you are basically fusing the low light image with the thermal image. That's very cool as well. This is a color palette switching. This two button is the focus plus and minus. The focus is done electronically with a motor inside. Whenever you adjust the focus, you can hear the motor buzzing very, very, very quietly. This button finally is the photo and the video. Uh, one single player press is the photo and another uh, long press is starting the video recording. And long press is also uh, stopping the video recording and saving it. 
It's not upgradable with SD card, but it has a built-in 16 GB storage space, so you can record plenty of uh, videos. And now let's take a look at the specifications from closer. The T84 unit is using a 70 micron amorphous silicon sensor and the 640 unit is a 12 micron uh, vanadium oxide sensor. Both using the same large 50 mm germanium lens and both have 50 mK in sensitivity. Frame rate is 50 Hz, focus is electronic. The controls for that you can find on the top side of both models. Both have a slightly different detection range, but both using the same ultra low illumination CMOS sensor for the visible light. It has two XGA resolution OLED micro display, one for each eye, Wi-Fi and GPS. The Wi-Fi serves for a direct connection to a phone or tablet. And then using its downloadable app, you can control every aspect of the device from color palette, focus, all the modes, recording, photo taking, shutter correction and everything. Before starting the app, you need to be sure the phone is connected to the binoculars Wi-Fi and not the home Wi-Fi. Built-in 16GB storage capacity, PAL analog video output with the included cable, and if you get four good quality uh, 18650 batteries, it will last you around six hours. Shock resistance is around 30G, um, protection level IP54. It's a little heavy at 1.5 kilo, but it's no wonder with all that feature squeezed into one tiny space. Now let's install the batteries, removing the battery cover. Inside the battery compartment we will find this uh, module placing the 18650s. Make sure the polarity is correct. You have to put it in the compartment. With the current correct orientation, as you can see, there is a pin. Just take the battery cover and install it. Now that the battery is secured, let's take a look at the aviation jack. Here's the aviation plug, cable. You can see there a red dot. And there you can also see a red dot. They need to face each other. Clicks in, nice and secure. The USB part is that you have to plug into your computer or any device if you want to download the videos and the images. So it will recognize it as a flash drive. I don't know what the 12 volt plug serves. The RS-232 serves for, for example, I guess, updating software related programming kind of things, I guess. And this is to put out uh, analog video from the device itself. Removing it easy, you just have to hold it in the secure point and disconnect it very easy. Now let's turn this on so I can quickly show you the menu, uh, what you see through the viewfinder, because uh, the viewfinder is not recording. If you record it's inside the device, it will record the actual image you see, but not the UI, not the user interface, not those uh, little things around. Only the heat spot tracking is what recorded. So you can only see this cool looking menu through the viewfinder. So let's see. It is very difficult to record uh, through the viewfinder. Long pressing the menu, it will give you the menu items. The menu items are looks nice and clear. You can navigate between, between them. With the photo button is what you use as, uh, as confirming your selection. Your, you have your date and time. Menu items are nice and easy, easy to read and understand. Language you only have English and Chinese, but the provider can adjust you the firmware for your own requirements. Now just to give you an idea how does it look like uh, through the viewfinder, because when you are recording it's not capturing this user interface elements like crosshair and all those informations uh, around the screen. This part in the red circle is around 700 meter from here. At maximum zoom there is 700 meter distance and you can easily see that there is a car standing or going, person walking through the cross. So this camera system is absolutely ideal for observation, border patrols and this type of uh, jobs. 
that requires you to see far, see moving things in the night, nothing is going to evade your attention. And now here is some side-by-side -side recordings to compare the 384 unit with the 640 model. First thing you will notice is that the quality of the 384 sensor is so good that it's very close to the 640, but for significantly less dollars. Now here you can see that the two visible light camera is exactly the same, both gives excellent visual quality. And now let's take a look at the nighttime performance of this visible light camera. As you can see it's dark, very low light environment, but this camera makes it look like it's daytime. Can pick up details in this dark that normal or phone cameras just can't. Here in the middle you can see how it's with the naked eye, and behind it the image with the low light camera. As you can see, it's a very cool device uh, with tons of features and it can easily compete with similar models from different brands, especially considering the price that is much lower. If you are a hunter or you like to go for hiking or even search and rescue teams, this could be an absolute solid and perfect option. If this nice little binocular catch your attention and you want to buy one, I'm going to leave all the information down in the description. But if you still find it difficult to contact the seller, you can always join to my Discord server. I'm also going to leave the link for that down in the description. Just join there and contact me, write me a private message there and I'm going to help you arranging the sale with the seller itself. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like and hit that bell icon so you're not going to miss in the future any more new gadget coming on my channel. See you in the next one.